a 100-year-old mantra, a 20-year-old amateur, and the great Harry Varden can teach us how to turn pressure into performance. Hey everybody, it's Malcolm Scoville with Imagine Golf, and welcome back to The Daily Drive, a daily three-minute bridge between where we are now and where we want to be, both on and off the golf course. Today, we launch a new seven-day series called My Own Worst Enemy. It's inspired by the book The Greatest Game Ever Played by Mark Frost. Today's episode, Mantra On, Pressure Off. In 1900, Francis we met was seven years old. He lived in a small two-story house in Brookline, Massachusetts. Every morning, he stood at his bedroom window and gazed across the street at the country club. The window framed a perfect view of the 17th hole. Francis loved golf, but his father was a gardener. The family was literally dirt poor. So Francis got a job as a caddy, making 25 cents a bag. But one year, his hero came to town. The English champion Harry Varden, the tiger of his day. Varden would go on to win six British Opens. Most of us use the overlapping grip named after Varden. Watching him play, Francis began chasing bigger dreams on the golf course. He modeled his swing on Varden. In high school, he led the team to the city championship, thanks to inspiration from Varden. Now, Francis dreamed of winning the Massachusetts State Amateur. To prepare, he competed in local tournaments. Every time he stepped up to the state level, he got nervous and tense. For three straight years, he choked under pressure and missed the cut by one stroke. It was particularly frustrating because he knew he could play better. Sound familiar? Well, his biggest hurdle was himself. Francis had modeled his swing on Harry Varden, but he'd overlooked the most important part of Harry's game. He had to think like Varden, too. So Francis got a copy of Varden's book, The Complete Golfer, and turned Varden's mental game advice into mantras. Here's the neuroscience in a nutshell. When you imagine doing something, you activate the same sensory and motor systems as actually doing it. Mantras tap into that power. As Francis repeated those mantras, the words reshaped his thoughts, and his thoughts reshaped his response to pressure. He made smarter decisions and had calmer reactions. At the 1912 State Amateur, he repeated, I never despair. He made the cut and finished second. The following year, he repeated, I treat my adversary as a non-entity and quietly play my own game. He advanced to the semifinals where he repeated, I play the way I know I can, one shot at a time. The pressure moments that once choked his performance now became triggers to repeat his mantras. While his competitors stumbled on anxiety and spiraled into self-criticism, Francis played mantra golf. He got out of his own way and won the 1913 Massachusetts Amateur. The author Lauren Oliver said, Mantras are the stories we tell ourselves to keep us going. Before we had the science to prove it, Francis we met discovered the power of mantras. Let's practice right now. Imagine you sliced your approach shot into a greenside bunker. You feel a little frustration. As you walk toward the ball, take a breath and repeat this mantra from Tiger. I smile at obstacles. I smile at obstacles. You can feel your attitude changing. Your ball is still in the bunker but your mind isn't. Mantras change our brain, and when you change your brain, you change your game. You still feel pressure, but instead of responding with a choke, you'll respond with a choice that gets the job done. A few minutes a day keeps the mental bogeys away and the actual bogeys on your scorecard. Meet me back here tomorrow when we all, and Francis, learn the loser's guide to winning. Until then, keep imagining. What's possible?